it's D-U-E, you tell I see you by this point, you're reading my mind, it's time for football, we bout to keep this thing moving, I'm bout it, you're with it, let's do it, we gon' make this thing official, you heard me, if you're the best then let's prove it, the goal is set to have a team become a unit, man, we bout to keep this thing moving, I'm bout it, you're with it, let's do it, we gon' make this thing official, you heard me, if you're the best then let's prove it, the goal is set to have a team become a unit, yeah. Welcome to Football Game Plans NFL All 32. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and today we're going to preview the New Orleans Saints. And before we get started, let's take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the Saints season as we go into our four minute offense. One of the major reasons why the Saints offense has been able to stay explosive and dynamic for the better part of 14 years is because they've done a great job of managing their offensive line. Now, their current offensive line management started back in 2015 when they drafted Andrews Pete out of Stanford in the first round, then in 17 with Ryan Ramschek, and last year we saw them take Eric McCoy out of A&M in the second round, and this past April selected Michigan lineman Cesar Ruiz in round one. All guys will start this season up front for New Orleans and are all fantastic players who will team up with left tackle Teron Armstead, who is the longest tenured Saint lineman, to form one of the better O-lines in the NFC. The old saying goes that if you want something substantial, you have to be willing to invest both time and resources into it. Well, the Saints wanted to have an explosive offense when they hired Sean Payton back in 2006 and have invested both time and resources in keeping their offensive line within the top five since then. Drew Brees is entering his 20th year in the NFL and the 13-time Pro Bowler and two-time Offensive Player of the Year is definitely and obviously on borrowed time. He has thrown 547 touchdown passes, 467 of them were in the Saints uniform. Now the last three years, he's led the league in completion percentage and last year led them in the lowest sack percentage. So he's clearly still very much decisive and accurate throwing a football, but we saw him miss time last year for the first time in quite some time. And we also saw a common theme rear its ugly head once again in the playoffs. His arm clearly isn't the same as it once was. Now, granted, that is expected to happen when you reach 41 years old and your 20th season of quarterbacking at the highest level. But if we're being completely honest, it has played a part in him not being able to close out teams like we used to see him do so earlier in his career. New Orleans re-upped his contract for another two seasons, but will this be the last year number nine suits up in the Big Easy before making a non-stop beeline to the Pro Football Hall of Fame? We shall see. The Drew Brees situation is why the Saints continue to invest in the QB2 spot searching for a potential successor. Now, the last two years, it was supposed to be Teddy Bridgewater, but Brees decided to come back for another go at it this upcoming season. So this year, it's a familiar name or face to the Saints, and it's Jameis Winston, the former number one overall pick and Heisman Trophy winner, led the league in passing yards last season, as well as yards per game, and unfortunately, in receptions. It's that latter statistic that ultimately got him out of Tampa, but it's the former stats that give you hope for him moving forward. Winston isn't a bad talent, he just has issues with turnovers, and what gives you optimism about that number being cut significantly juxtaposed to his TD numbers is that he had LASIK surgery this all season to correct his eyesight. As funny as that may sound, that's a significant thing for a quarterback who stated that he struggled with depth perception. If that turns out to be the case, then the Saints will have their answer to the heir apparent question in the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Just like the investment the Saints made in their offensive line, they've made a similar one on the defensive side of the football the last couple of years. As a result, they've built up quite the depth across the board, which has played an integral role in the overall team's success the last few seasons. The Saints are ridiculously deep along the defensive line with both pass rushers and run stoppers, and that allows them to keep that rotation both fresh and active. In this current COVID-19 climate that we're living in, having good depth on defense at all three levels will be of the utmost importance. We talked a ton already about Drew Brees and Jameis Winston, but having both guys on the roster does give the Saints a strong quarterback room once again heading into the season. Brees is like a cheat code out there because he's an extension of head coach Sean Payton and knowing that offense like he knows the English language. Without preseason, it'll be interesting to see how they're able to get Jameis Winston some live game reps this year. What you like about Winston is that he's an active learner, always willing to humble himself to learn, and that's a big part of being a pro. Whenever he does get his next opportunity to play, I'm willing to bet that he'll be more than prepared and ready to go. 
Taysom Hill is back as the Saints plus one out there on the field. He's extremely valuable to the football team because of the many things he can do, both on offense and on special teams. His offensive role won't change this season or in the near future for that matter. He's their Wildcat quarterback from here on out. New Orleans was middle of the pack in terms of running the football last year, ranking 16th in the NFL. Alvin Kamara led the team with nearly 800 yards while chipping in an additional 533 yards as a receiver with 81 receptions, which were second on the team. He dealt with some leg injuries during the season, which took away a little bit of the explosive plays that we used to see from him in previous years. Now, he's still one of the best multifaceted backs in the NFL and at full strength, the explosive plays that we saw in abundance should return in 2020. Latavius Murray was brought in last season to run sidecar with Kamara and honestly performed admirably in that role. He had his most productive season since 2017, averaging 4.4 yards a carry and rushing for 637 yards. Now he turned 30 years old this past January, so the Saints want to have another young back on deck to help lessen the workload just a little bit, which is why they signed Ty Montgomery this past offseason from the New York Jets. Montgomery is more similar to Kamara than he is to Murray, but does give the Saints someone who could be a mismatch for backers and safeties in a passing game. I like what the Saints have done at wide receiver. I feel like they're pretty stacked at this position with both frontline talent and developmental players. Michael Thomas is the leader of that group and one of the best receivers in football. There's not a pass that he can't catch and is one of the most clutch at the position as well. The Saints wanted to get a bit more dynamic at receiver and went out and signed Emmanuel Sanders, who played last with San Francisco. And with Sanders in the fold, the Saints get a savvy route runner who has top-notch acceleration and run after the catch skills. He's the perfect complement to Michael Thomas. Now spots three through seven essentially are up for grabs. Ideally, the Saints would like Traquan Smith to seize that role considering his draft capital, but it's hard to ignore the playmaking ability of special teams ace Deontay Harris out of Assumption College and what he can do with the ball in his hands. Where it gets fun is looking at some of the developmental options that they have at their disposal. Guys like Emmanuel Butler, Austin Carr, Krishan Hogan, Lil Jordan Humphrey have all been working within the Saints program, but keep an eye out for undrafted rookie free agents Marquez Callaway out of Tennessee and Jawan Johnson from Oregon. Callaway has tremendous polish, while Johnson is a big body receiver that could easily develop into a flex tight end if need be. And speaking of that tight end group, the Saints got great production last year from Jared Cook, who came in via free agency. He finished second on the team in receiving yards for 705 and hit pay dirt nine times. And having a tight end like Cook really helped expand that Saints passing game in 2019. They are expecting to expand it even more so with the talented third round pick Adam Troutman out of Dayton. The former FCS standout also stood out at the Senior Bowl displaying his ability to win one-on-one -on -one versus backers and safeties and figures to bring that same level of ability to the Saints offense. I think he landed in a perfect situation. New Orleans still has veteran Josh Hill as well. He's a solid receiver but does really good work as a blocker. Up front along the offensive line, the Saints are in really good shape. The hope is that they can get a full, healthy season out of Teron Armstead, who has yet to do so in his eight-year career. He's a difference maker when he's out there on the field, mainly because it keeps the line from reshuffling guys to help offset the loss. Andrews Pete is coming off of back-to-back -back Pro Bowl seasons and has really blossomed since moving inside the guard. The toss-up between Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz as to who will play center isn't that big of an issue to me, as both guys are equally as capable of handling that job or handling the guard duties. And rounding out their starting unit with Ryan Ramchek, who was named first team all pro last year, and is looking to make that a common occurrence for years to come. He's quickly become one of the better tackles in football. And the Saints also bolstered their depth with former Ravens offensive lineman James Hurst, who started a lot of games in Baltimore. He's able to step in at guard or tackle. You look at Will Clapp and Nick Easton, they give them depth on the interior, along with Patrick Omame, who can provide depth as well at tackle. I'm also intrigued by the development of second year tackle Ethan Greenwich out of Villanova. He was in the Saints program last year and figures to be counted on this season to help solidify the depth at tackle as well. The Saints defensive line depth chart is equally as productive as it is impressive. Cam Jordan is the headliner here as he's just consistently finding ways to set up shop in the opposing backfield. I don't think he gets enough credit for how good of a run defender he really is. Opposite of him, the Saints are expecting third year player Marcus Davenport to break out and have a double digit sack season. And with the amount of draft capital they gave up to get him, 
he has to be able to be much more disruptive up front than he's been so far. However, they do get some disruption from Trey Hendrickson. The former FAU Owl brings instant energy off the bench. Last season, he finished with four and a half sacks, four TFLs, and nine QB hits. I would expect to see him on the field a lot more this upcoming season. And Carl Granderson played in eight games as a rookie, and the team is very high on his ability to pressure a quarterback. He's another player who will see more work within this rotation this upcoming season. Now, defensive tackle is a significant strength for New Orleans, in my opinion. Malcolm Brown was everything they expected him to be last year as a free agent, helping turn the Saints into one of the better run defenses in the NFL. He and David Onyemata did a great job in maintaining the line of scrimmage, and Onyemata is gunning for his first Pro Bowl appearance of his career. If they get a healthy Sheldon Rankin this season, that'll help increase the Saints' ability to pressure from within. Rankin is an excellent player who has been snake bitten by injuries the last couple of seasons. New Orleans has a solid core of rotational guys like Shai Tuttle, Mario Edwards Jr., and Taylor Stallworth, who they all developed rather nicely within their program. Linebacker Mario Davis led the team in tackles last season and has been as much of a leader to this defense as Cam Jordan has been over the course of his time here in New Orleans. Now, over the last few years, you can say he's been as good of an acquisition that they've made on this side of the ball. Surrounding him is where you have some questions about the second level, mainly because of health. Both Kiko Alonso and Alex Anzalone are very good athletic backers that have good versatility, but they haven't been able to stay healthy over the course of their careers. It's mainly why the Saints went ahead and drafted Zach Bond out of Wisconsin in the third round. He's a versatile, athletic player who can blitz effectively and also drop back in coverage and close on the ball. He's going to have an excellent rookie season, in my opinion. I would be interested to see what growth Caden Ellis makes in year two. As he's returning from injury, he can provide depth at the second level at two of the backer spots. But they do have a steady veteran in Greg Robertson who can play all three backer spots and not only provides depth, but is also an excellent special teamer. But keep an eye out for undrafted rookie free agent Joe Bocce out of Michigan State. Every time you watch the Spartans play defense, it was always 35 making plays on the ball. He's an active linebacker, run and chase type of a guy that has a chance to make this football team. The Saints should be solid in the secondary this year as they should expect consistent play from their starting corners, Marshawn Lattimore and Janoris Jenkins. Now, Lattimore is one of the better corners in the game who has above average ball skills, and I do like the click and close ability of Janoris Jenkins, who proved to be a valuable addition to the team when they made the move for him later last season. Inside that slot corner figures to be P.J. Williams once again after being re-signed. Now, Williams is a good matchup defender with length, and height, but he has to be much better at finding the football. He tends to leave a lot of plays out there on the field, in my opinion. There should be a battle the rest of the way between Patrick Robinson and free agent signee Dietrich Nichols, who comes over from the XFL's Houston Roughnecks. Malcolm Jenkins returns to the same secondary, pairing up with Marcus Williams and Jenkins and Williams should work well together as having Jenkins back there should allow Williams to be in more of a ball hawking mode on the back end. But I think second year player Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is ready to blossom this season. He's the move piece at safety, able to match up in the slot, blitz, play the run, and can do a multitude of things and is a prime candidate to have an excellent 2020. And both DJ Swearinger and second-year player Saquon Hampton will continue to provide good depth at the position. Football game plan is brought to you in part by Ninth and Lux. Visit the website ninthandlux.com and check out the clothing gallery. Nesby Phipps, art, life, entertainment. Nesbyphipps.com. Grind It Out Fitness. Visit the website grinditoutfitness.com and download the app. Financial Coaching LLC, Investment, Retirement, Security. Stewardship Credit, Financial Growth is in your hands. StewardshipCredit.com. Adrian Marie Photo, Photographer, Writer, Management. AdrianMariePhotography.com. Lock Multimedia.
Be sure to order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Marquez Callaway out of Tennessee has a chance to be this year's version of the undrafted rookie free agent who makes the Saints roster. He has good polish and strength for the position and will raise some eyebrows this camp. I thought Keith Washington Jr. had a stellar week at the East West Shrine Bowl. He looked good in one-on-one -on -one coverage and has above average ball skills. I believe he has a chance to make some noise at the position. Cesar Ruiz out of Michigan will make an immediate impact as a rookie. He's starting at either center or guard for the Saints and will help spearhead what should be a much improved run game for New Orleans. And defensively, Zach Bond's playmaking ability will thrust him into the national spotlight and will make numerous all-rookie teams when it's all said and done. Drew Brees is the biggest X-factor offensively as they'll need him to be his best throughout the season and into the postseason. He can't afford to miss time as Winston has only been there for a few months and Hill is more of an H-back than quarterback. Malcolm Jenkins figures to be the biggest X-factor on the other side of the ball. His ability to communicate effectively should help everyone else on the back end do their jobs much more effectively. Look for rookie tight end Adam Troutman to have a breakout season. He's the perfect tight end for Sean Payton's passing game and will take full advantage of the looks he'll see because of Jared Cook on the other side. I do think this is the year that Marcus Davenport will put it all together and break out. He flashes at times that speed to power that you want to see from a defensive end, and he does play a powerful game, but look for him to add more of the technical skill to his physical skills and have a standout season. The biggest reason for optimism for New Orleans this season is the Peyton Breeze connection. They're like Belichick and Tom Brady. As long as these two are together, the Saints will always have a chance to go far. And also, this team has depth on both sides of the ball. I can't stress that enough. You look at what they have along the offensive line, defensive line, at linebacker out there, at receiver, at tight end. This is a very deep football team and one that gives you a lot of confidence heading into the season. A big cause for concern would be if Drew Brees' play falls off. If what we saw against the Vikings carries over into the regular season, it could be a long year for the Saints despite all the depth that they have on the roster because Jameis Winston just isn't ready enough as far as to run his offense efficiently. So they need Brees to be the best version of himself this upcoming year. The road to the Super Bowl for the Saints goes as follows. If this linebacking core that's athletic and versatile can stay intact all season, they have a chance to be really good at the second level. And the running game has to become explosive. I thought that was the element of the Saints offense that was missing last year. You know, they lost Mark Ingram the year before, and it wasn't really explosive like they were when he was there. So they need both Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray become explosive to really help break through offensively and the secondary has to set the pace i think if they are able to turn the ball over be a little bit more effective and efficient in their play the saints team can break through in the playoffs and get to tampa for the super bowl i have the saints finishing first in the nfc south this is just too good of a football team deep on both sides of the ball more in particular they're deep on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And if you can win at the point of attack, you're going to win a lot of football games. And I do think the Saints will win a lot of those this upcoming year. So that's it for this edition of NFL All 32. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan podcast and leave us a five-star rating that's where you can find our nfl all 32 podcast and keep it locked here on our football game plan youtube channel as we have a host of saints video related content coming down the pike it's d u e u tell i see you by this point you're reading my mind it's time for football we bought the
together, keep this thing moving. I'm about it, you're with it, let's do it. We gon' make this thing official, you heard me? If you're the best, then let's prove it. The goal is set to have a team become a unit, man. We bout to keep this thing moving. I'm about it, you're with it, let's do it. We gon' make this thing official, you heard me? If you're the best, then let's prove it. The goal is set to have a team become a unit, yeah.